Sauron, the deceiver, enemy of the free peoples of Middle-earth and forger of the One Ring. How much could he bench? This might seem like a ridiculous question, and it is, but I'm a huge fan of Lord of the Rings, and particularly Sauron as a villain. I have on my finger the One Ring. Not sure if you can see that. I was at the gym the other day thinking for the 500th time about the opening scene to Lord of the Rings where Sauron is just batting people aside. And I was wondering how strong you'd have to be in order to do that. The sort of prototypical bro question whenever someone says they go to the gym is, well, how much do you bench? In order to answer this question, I'm going to have to engage Professor mode. In order to figure out how strong someone is, we need to figure out how much force they generate. Now, force is what accelerates mass. So it is defined by Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration, and it is defined in Newton's one kilogram of mass accelerating one meter per second squared. In the opening to Lord of the Rings, we get the clearest demonstration of the amount of force Sauron can wield. He bats aside multiple men at a time. We'll go ahead and take a look here. Here is the best view. And he hits what looks to me like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's call it eight bodies. And he hits them high in the air too. If you look, this guy is a fully grown man and it's maybe four times that high and hits them really far away as well, wailing away at them. And I love stuff like this. This is a better view. You can see he's about hitting them about four men high. So we've seen what he can do. We know that he hits about eight men, but these are not ordinary men of Middle Earth. These are the Numenorians right after the fall of Numenor. I have here Tolkien Gateway, which says that the average Numenorian was about six foot four. So we're looking for how much mass a man of about six foot four would have who's in fighting shape, good shape. This is not a skinny person. This is not an obese person. I have here three examples of athletes from a game that I like quite a bit, ice hockey, who are six foot four or 193 centimeters, and they all weigh about 220 pounds or 100 kilograms. As the weight of a Numenorean, we're gonna use 220 or 100 kilograms. I am American, so I'm gonna be using imperial units, but Newton's second law is defined in terms of kilograms, so we are gonna to have to convert that at the end. Now, Sauron hitting eight men of about 220 pounds or 100 kilograms is impressive enough, but uh, the Numenorians that he fought weren't naked. They had equipment on. So I'm on Wikipedia here. It says plate armor is somewhere between 15 to 25 kilos, so about 33 to 55 pounds. So we have to add that mass to the mass of the people. Total eight Numenorians at 100 kilograms plus 15 to 25 kilograms of armor is about 900 kilograms of mass that Sauron hits with a single swing. All right, so we have the mass of about 900 kilograms. Now we have to figure out how far Sauron hit the Numenorians and how much force that would take. I have here an arc equation calculator. We were looking at the video and it seemed like he hit the people about four men high. Now these are Numenorians at 6'4". That means he hit them about 25 feet in the air. To make things simple, we'll go ahead and describe this as a regular arc, meaning that he hit them as much up as to the side. We're gonna use this circle arc length calculator. Sauron hit Numenorians about 78.53. 78.5 feet is 23.9268 meters. How fast do you have to be going through the air in order to fly 24 meters? Because obviously gravity is gonna be pulling you down the whole time. I have here a projectile motion calculator, which will tell us the answer. We know the horizontal distance and the height. We've said they were both four Numenorians high. So that's 25 feet. And uh, they start at height zero and end at height zero. Go ahead and calculate, which gives us a velocity of 41.343 feet per second. 41.343 feet per second is 12.6 meters per second. Now that we know the velocity, the only thing that we need in order to find the acceleration 
for the second half of our f equals ma equation is how much time did it take to accelerate up to that speed? In order to figure that out, I'm using this as a reference that a baseball has on average a contact time of 0.7 milliseconds, 0.0007 seconds. And I'm going to go ahead and say that Sauron hits these people aside like they're baseballs, and so it will take the same amount of time. Let's go ahead and summarize where we are. So we're looking for the force that Sauron can generate. Mass times acceleration. We know the mass. The mass equals the number of people hit times the mass of those people plus their armor, right? So we know that's 900 kilograms. The force is going to equal to 900 times whatever the acceleration is going to be. To find the acceleration, acceleration is velocity over seconds, which is essentially how long it takes to get up to that velocity. Now the velocity that we have from our calculation is 12.6 meters per second. And then again, that's over uh, time it takes to accelerate. And we know that that time equals 0 0.007. That combined, our acceleration is gonna equal 12.6 over 0 0.007. 18,000 meters per second squared. So now we can plug it in to this equation, 900 times 18,000, and we get 16,200,000 newtons of force. 16.2 million is a ridiculously high number. To put it in perspective, we can go back to our example of our baseball player, Mike Trout, who's well known for hitting very hard. For an average hit, he hits at, again, according to this website, they do all the math here, if you'd like to double check, he hits at 20,843 newtons. 20,843 is going to be our reference. Let's see how much stronger Sauron is, how much more force my trout force, Sauron times stronger. And this is a one-handed hit, but we'll go ahead and be generous and compare it to a two-handed hit. Sauron hits 777 times harder than Mike Trout. Okay, great, you might be saying. This tells us how much better Sauron would be at baseball, but it doesn't say anything about the bench, which is the point of this video. Well, I'm getting to that. We just needed to compare Sauron's strength to an elite athlete, and now for an elite athlete in the bench press, Mike Trout weighs 233 pounds, so we'll just go ahead and say that an elite lift would be 425 pound bench. So if we go here and say an elite bench is 425 pounds, then we can say that Sauron's bench will be that times that, 333,000 pounds <laughs> and some change. Let's convert that into tons to make it a little easier to deal with. I'm gonna use short tons because I am in the US, 165 tons. <laughs> that's, that's a sick bench. Let's talk about what weighs 165 tons. Again, to put that in perspective, a house, single story house, weighs about 170 tons. The Statue of Liberty is 150 tons, so Sauron could go ahead and bench that, no big deal. Blue whale, average about 115, so it's it's almost one and a half blue whales on the bench. Two space shuttles, 13 anchors at a time, 17 T-Rexes. I think you get the idea. So there we go, the conclusive science-based, no holes in the explanation number. Sauron can bench press about 165 tons. That would be cool to be able to do. Thanks for watching, I hope you liked this video. If you did, check out my other videos, like subscribe, share, and leave a comment with any other video ideas you might have. See you next time.